If you were to travel back in time 7 million years, the world would look different in a way you'd probably find unsettling. Plant life and forests would pretty much be the same, but the animals, boy oh boy. Turtles the size of cars, crocodilians big enough to eat them, flightless birds towering over your head. And somewhere in the developing grasslands of what is now Chad, a small, unassuming primate was taking the first upright steps to becoming human. Maybe enough to give you an uncanny valley sensation. This is Sahelanthropus chidensis, the oldest branch in the hominin lineage that we know of. The fossils of Sahelanthropus, specifically this one, give me chills in a good way. It makes me feel weird. Like I'm looking at the face of who we were 7 million years ago. It's this feeling that I can't really describe, like my brain goes quiet. It almost feels like the closest thing to a spiritual feeling that the biological world can give me. Like if you've ever been to Yosemite, it's that feeling. But anyway, that is why I decided to get this fossil tattooed on me for the fourth episode of Extinct, where I get some of my favorite extinct animals tattooed on me and I tell you all about them. So without further ado, my name is Lindsay Nicole and this is Extinct, Extinct. I feel like I want to give some context on how exactly I was feeling when I was getting this tattoo. This was the immediate day after getting my Dimetrodon tattoo. So my leg was already pissed, so it hurt. I'd already done like 10 hours of tattooing the day before. And then this one ended up going until like 11 p.m. It hurts. This is the most painful one yet. I'm sorry, honey. This was the most painful tattoo so far, but it would not end up being the most painful out of all of them. What's that fucking word they use for like, uh, foreshadowing? As always, we're gonna get the general information, global conditions out of the way. It's the late Miocene, about 7 million years ago. The climate is shifting. Forests are shrinking, being replaced by grasslands generally. The air is a bit cooler a bit drier, and massive animals are dominating the lands and seas. Car-sized turtles like Stupendemes geographicus, a badass, sick-ass name, and crocodilians large enough to take them down and eat them like Perusaurus. They could get to over 30 feet long. Max estimates put them at like 40 feet, making them some of the largest crocodilians to ever exist that we know of. This was also the time of the Megalodon and its competitors, the Leviathan whales. There were heinous terror birds in South America and thunderbirds like Dromornis in Australia. In Africa, there were elephant relatives, such as Dinotherium, also known as the Crimson Chin, and Hexaprotodon, just as deceptive as hippos today, but with a mouth like nobody's business. And on this continent is where we find the beginnings of our hominin lineage, Sahelanthropus chudensis. I know. Quite a mouthful. Before it was given a scientific name, the fossil was called Tumai, which means hope of life. So we can just call him Tumai. Or Tommy. You made tattoo me, princess. Okay, now here's the deal. We gotta make it look like Tommy. Gotta make it look like Tommy. The OG ancestor. Better show respect. This is the kind of skull tattoo that I feel like would typically end up looking like mush. Well, don't don't speak too soon. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. Angel's really good at making things not look like mush. I am. I do that sometimes. There's two gels, goos over there. Mm. What are those? My secret formula. No, um, <laughs> actually, this is important. It's just a lubricant. I'm dragging a vibrating needle through your skin. I should probably lube you up first. Hey, it's true. Yeah, yeah. His skull kind of dumb looking, huh? Hey. hey. Sorry, he kind of looks like a slice of pizza. Hey. But he's beautiful. What do you mean? He got squeezed. He looks like a piece of pizza. I don't see the I don't see the pizza. He's got crust. Oh, you're just making fun of his eyebrow. He got crust. Before we get deeper into Tommy and their place within human evolution as a whole, I think it's fair to say we should do a quick little human evolution disclaimer, an HED, if you will, just to make sure we're all on the same page about what the fuck is going on. There's a chance when you think of human evolution, your brain goes to this. I want you to burn it from your brain. Also, funny, I got this image from baptistpress.com. I was looking for this specific thing, you know, because it's fucking everywhere. And this was the first result that had it, trying to debunk it, I assume, but it doesn't even exist anyway. So anyway, Burn it from your brain. Throw it in the trash where it belongs. Okay, that's a bit dramatic. It's just that this is misleading. Makes evolution feel like a linear thing. And also like a chimp just started stretching itself more and more until it invented taxes. And both of those things are not the case. So first off, evolution is not linear like this picture suggests. It's more like the branches of a bush with branches that end. 
and even branches that intertwine because some freaks decided to bang. And within that bush, multiple species exist at the same time, even ancestors and descendants at the same time. One population of a species can diverge and become a new species, and that original species can still exist both at the same time. And second, chimps are not our ancestors. We share a common ancestor with them. Is that common ancestor Tommy? Maybe so. Is Tommy portrayed to look more like modern chimps than modern humans? Sure, humans lost a lot of hair, but the chimp side of the split has been evolving for just as long as the human side of the split, in their own ways, for their own ecosystems. Saying we evolved from chimpanzees is like saying your cousin is your grandmother. I'll say it again in a different way. The common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees, and sure, throw bonobos into the mix. The common ancestor between all of us was not a human or a bonobo or a chimpanzee. Just like how your grandma isn't you or your cousin. Okay, I'm gonna stop there before I get carried away because I love talking about this and also I have surprise. This tattoo inspired me to finally start the human evolution series once history of cats is done. Guess what it's gonna be called? The history of us. That's right, bitch. Or maybe the history and evolution of us. We'll see. Let me know which one you like better. I think I like the second one better, but yeah. Expect episode one next month. And you can consider this video a little taste test of what's to come. So back to Tommy. First off, old. Somewhere between six and seven million years old. They're so close to the split between the hominin lineage and chimp lineage, that ancestor, that common ancestor that we have, that they have kind of been like placed all around like maybe this is a chimp ancestor. Maybe this is the actual direct ancestor of both. Also maybe thought to be the ancestor of gorillas. But um, some analysis of their structure of their skull done in 2005, I think, pointed more evidence at hominin ancestor, which is really, really cool. This skull was found back in 2001 in Northern Chad at a fossil site called Taurus Manala. A French paleontologist named Michael Brunet and his team made a blockbuster find. Nine cranial fossils, including a pretty complete yet mangled skull. Michael and his team knew instantly this was new, unusual, previously unknown. So for the time being, they nicknamed the fossil Tumat. And over the next year, Brunette's team realized Tommy might just be the earliest member of our family ever discovered, which was the first time that any hominid remains had been found outside of East Africa or South Africa. So this was shocking for multiple reasons. Suddenly, early human relatives are all over the place on a continental scale. So this raised some questions. Maybe Tommy wasn't a true hominid or the oldest member of our family at all. Maybe instead a little side quest. This has created controversy in the scientific community for decades. And it definitely doesn't help that the rest of Tommy's body nowhere to be found for now. There's no body? Just the skull. Aww. There is potentially a femur that was found because there were like multiple bones found, but there was no like proof that they could be connected. Mm. So kind of just got to focus on the skull. I was going to ask, do we know how tall they were? They were pretty small just based on the skull, generally about the size of a modern chimp, even though it's not. Their brain size was also very small, like definitely smaller than later hominids like Australopithecus, but even smaller than a chimp's brain. Mm. So. Dumb, <laughs> dumb, dumb. Who are you calling Pinhead? Eh? Its face was sloping with prominent brow ridges, but the teeth are small and a little more human-like. They had some early traits that definitely pointed to hominin. They had their uh, foramen magnum, the hole that allows the, the spine to connect to the skull at the bottom of their skull rather than in the back because they were starting to walk upright. Animals that don't walk upright, like most of them, have the hole in the back rather than on the bottom. That's a huge clue that even this far back, our line might've been standing up or at least sometimes walking on two legs. We've got a skull, a thigh bone at the site, but is not confirmed to belong to Tommy. So lots to discuss, lots of mystery, lots to figure out. Oh, let me explain the term hominin. We know that around 7 million years ago, our ancestors split off from the ancestors of modern chimpanzees and bonobos. Anything in our branch after that point is a hominin. Sahelanthropus is for now considered one of the earliest hominins right after that split, or maybe right on top of it. You've probably also heard the term hominid with a D. Hominid versus hominid, they sound fucking the same. Hominid with a D is for all great apes. So that includes chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos, gorillas, etc. Hominin with the N is just for us and our human, early human ancestors. I get those mixed up all the time 
in previous videos, I've probably definitely said hominid when I met hominin because it just fucking sounds the same and I forget. So anyway, like I said, the team who discovered Tommy identified it as an early hominin almost immediately. Those small teeth, less fang-like than what you see in chips, match later hominids. The face is a bit flatter, the brow ridges thick, but not gorilla thick. And that foramen magnum says it probably held its head upright. All telltales for a member of our team, but some scientists argue that the fossil is just before the switch, and that all of these traits could belong to the shared ancestor of both chimps and humans. Or maybe Sahelanthropus isn't even in our direct line, a cousin removed instead of a grandparent. Also without leg bones or foot bones, it's hard to figure out what's up with what they're working with. Nevertheless, virtual reconstructions generally support its potential hominin status. So for now, Sahelanthropus is definitely at the very base, either the earliest known hominin or the last stop before the chimpanzee and human lines split for good. Okay, so what happens next? Well. You're gonna have to wait for the details in the series. But like I said, this is a little sampler. Obviously the hominin journey is important context for why Tommy is so sick. And luckily the fossil record gives us a rough outline of how we went from this to this. Six million years ago, a little further east in Kenya, you get Aurora to Genensis, to Genensis, to Genensis. I'm gonna have to figure out which one is the correct pronunciation for the series because I don't remember. This was actually my first ever long form appearance on YouTube because I collaborated with Milo on his video on Aurorin. And he sent me a little necklace that's just a femur because Aurorin is really just a fucking femur. That's what we have for now. But it suggests a hominin that was chimp sized, walking upright. And other related teeth suggest they were eating a plant heavy diet. So obviously with this, you got a lot of the same shit with Sahelanthropus, just bits and pieces that don't really give us a good story. Much more research to be done. By about five to 4 million years ago in Ethiopia, we get something a bit more recognizable, Ardipithecus. They had a much more transitional mix of features between tree climbing ancestors and bipedal, Descendants, long arms, and a powerful grip, but also pelvis and leg structures hinting at walking upright when on the ground. They were a little bit more human-like, human-like proportions. They had slightly less protruding brow ridges, but they were still pretty strong. TSA omnivore, eating fruits, seeds, and maybe small animals on occasion. The brains are still about chimp size, and the bodies are small. After that came a group called Australopithecus. You might've heard of Lucy, that- Lucy! A uh, hominid, that was found, and as they were preparing it, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was just playing on repeat, so they named it Lucy. Very cute. Dated to about three to two million years ago, these were definite upright walkers, with skeletons and trackways to prove it, and hands that can use simple tools. Your simple hammer, perhaps, that I mentioned in the last video of the evolution of hammerheads. Australopithecus had flatter faces still. The teeth were in line with ours, but brains were still growing. Still not much bigger than a chimps just yet. And then came our genus. Homo. <laughs> you might have heard of Homo erectus. <laughs> Sorry. You have something to say? <laughs> Our genus, Homo. <laughs> Maybe me and you. <laughs> Why are you gay? Every time I bring up Homo erectus, it's just a bloodbath in the comments it's section. It's a funny name. I know. It's an unfortunately funny name. It's an unfortunate. They should have known better. Yeah, how do you think people feel to know that we're all homo? I think that it makes them think evolution is a joke. Uh, so like, they're literally- Sounds like a made up word. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. literally making fun of you guys. Like, that's what they say. Like, they're just playing with you and they're laughing about it is what they'll say. Okay, but if you were, it would be really funny. <laughs> so and, next was homo. Yeah, and homo erectus was the first hominid that we know of to leave Africa. This was transformative for our group. Homo erectus spread the fuck out and eventually evolved into the Neanderthals. Denisovans. So Neanderthals were in like Europe, kind of in the Middle East as well. And our species, Homo sapiens, met up with the Neanderthals there and got a little funny and did some funny stuff. There's also a group, the Denisovans. Denise. <laughs> That's my mom's name. Oh. <laughs> yeah, shout out. <laughs> in Russia, there was also Homo floresiensis, also known as the Hobbit people. Ooh. The smallest human species that we know of. They were like three and a half feet tall. No way. They were alive on the island of Flores in Indonesia. That's the only place that they've been found. So there's a conspiracy that they're still alive there, hidden in the jungle. I'm gonna guess they're not, because I think we would have found them already. But they're really little, Lindsay. <laughs> you have to look harder. <laughs> Did you try looking like underneath stuff? Yeah, you, you never know. They might be under some pebble somewhere <gasps> that we haven't uncovered yet. And then eventually, us. And Homo sapiens spread out. At one point, there were like 
eight human species alive across the planet. And some of them definitely interacted with each other. And that's like really weird to think about. It's weird to think about seeing something that looks almost like you, but isn't you. I don't know. It's important to remember that each transition in this story didn't happen overnight. Traits mix and match. There were populations with different traits that we can't even place into the family tree because they just seem too similar to two different species that we already know. It gets muddy as fuck because that's what evolution is. It's muddy as fuck and especially human evolution because we're trying to learn that shit all the time. More new shit means more muddy as fuck, which is cool and which is why I am stoked to have gotten this tattoo regardless of it sucking pain wise and also taking a very long time. This is Ginkgo Biloba, an OG. They've been around for millions and millions and millions of years and are still alive today. Practically unchanged. They're around, I think during the Cretaceous period, maybe the Jurassic, they're still alive today. I was about to say that they're from a different time period than our guy Tommy, but actually not because they're still around. They've been around that entire time, so. Once these are done, we're done for the day. <laughs> it's a tough spot. It looks fantastic. It looks like bargaining. we can call it a night. You're bargaining. <laughs> I'm not bargaining. I swear. Meanwhile, it's almost 11 p.m. It is 10.43 p.m. Yeah, you guys gotta stop making me talk. You look cool. Ooh. This is, this turned out sick. Oh, that feels like a Baja Blast. Good. <laughs> like, so thirst quenching and refreshing. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let's check this out in the middle. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, that looks really sick. I would rather sit until 11 p.m. to have a really cool tattoo than to have it not look like this. Can I? Yeah. Wow. Angel killed it once again. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the final episode of Extinct actually coming out next week. If you know what my favorite extinct animal is, you know what tattoo I'm getting. That's the hint. Keep up with behind the scenes updates on our Discord server on Patreon. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya. Like I have evidence, video evidence. I am not just five, three and a half, not just five, four, I'm five,